So, uh, let's start. Let's discuss the enzymes, especially the blood clotting factors that are also product of genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology. So, we are done with the other products. But before that, um, I'll give you a background, a little background about how the clot is formed in the body. Okay? Uh, we will be talk talking a little about hemostasis. Pag sinabing hemostasis class, um, it means uh, we will be stopping the clot formation. Okay? So, ang hemostasis kasi class, meron siyang first stage and then meron siyang second stage. Um, sa first stage niya, the part one is the platelet aggregation. Now, what will trigger the platelet aggregation? That is, ano, um, if meron kang injury and then there will be exposure of the collagen. Yan. Again, if you have injury and then there is exposure of the collagen, then that will trigger uh, the platelet aggregation. Now, there will be changes in the shape of the platelet and um, merong, ano, merong mga receptors involved para mag, ano, para mag aggregate sila and then mag dikit or mag maging adhesive yung ating platelet to our um, cell membrane. So again, we have collagen na exposure and that will trigger the platelet to actually bind here. We have two receptors, the GP6 and the GP1B. See, si GP6, this is the receptor of the chemical called selectin that is an adhesive para dumikit si platelet to the cell membrane. And then, um, the other receptor naman, the GP1B, is for the von Willebrand factor. So that is uh, the same thing para, para pa rin magkaroon ng adhesion si platelet sa ating endothelial, endothelial cells. Again, it will just take place if there is injury or most especially the exposure of the collagen. Now, ano pa ang other factors dito? If there is a change in the shape of the platelet class kasi mag, magdikit na siya sa endothelial cells, that will trigger the release of some inflammatory factors like the thromboxane, the prostaglandins, mag-cause na siya ng inflammation to the surrounding cells. And then at, uh, aside from that, uh, there is another factor, uh, there is another receptor involved here, this one, the GP2B and the 3A. This is the receptor for fibrinogen. So later, we will talk uh, what is fibrinogen and ano yung gamit niya kasi sa stage 2 of the hemostasis siya mangyayari. Okay? So, eto, tandaan nyo, GP2B and 3A. Pero sa first part ng hemostasis, the platelet aggregation and adhesion, we will not talk about um, products pa because um, yung mga products natin or yung mga drugs natin that will act on this pathway is not a product of recombinant DNA technology or genetic engineering. So we will have a separate chapter for those drugs. I will just give you a background information and how the the platelet aggregation takes place. This is the first first part of the blood clot formation. So, itong fibrinogen, this will connect platelet to another platelet hanggang marami na sila and then the clot will will be formed and will be stabilized and um, mag, ano na, mag stop na ang hemorrhage or bleeding. Okay? Kasi hindi pwede na um, maliit na sugat and matagal siya magklat or even malaking sugat and then hindi magkaklat. May problema tayo doon. Okay? Uh, we will concentrate more to the second stage of the blood clot formation or the hemostasis. Okay? Kasi dito yung mga drugs na 
product of genetic engineering. However, do you have questions on the first part? Wala. Proceed ta. You can, ano, if you cannot turn on your microphone, then you can send a message sa, ano, sa chat. Okay? We will not dwell uh, on this part pa. Dito ta sa next chapter, Anna. Okay. So, we will, ano, uh, we will concentrate to this part. Um, in the stage 2 of the blood clot formation, we have the so-called um, cascades. Kasi, ano ito, step by step. And then, sa cascade na ito, meron tayong three, three pathways. We have the intrinsic pathway, extrinsic pathway, and the common pathway. Now, um, magkaiba to sila class. Si intrinsic pathway will be triggered if you have injury sa inyong endothelial cells. Okay? So, for example, kanang nasamad ka, that's it. Um, intrinsic pathway yung matitrigger. Now, si extrinsic pathway naman will be activated if you have injury sa inyong um, vascular smooth muscle. So, I'm talking about the blood vessels. So, if the injury is hanggang doon sa blood vessels, may ma cut na blood vessels, extrin extrinsic pathway will be activated. I hope you have uh, understood the difference between the two. Now, itong intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway will meet, mag, mag -me meet sila and then that's what we call the common pathway. Now, sa pathways na ito, maraming factors involved. Uh, let's concentrate first sa intrinsic pathway before tayo makabuo ng clot. Okay? So, again, there is contact here. When you say contact, um, there is injury sa endothelial cells, and once na magkaroon ng injury, that will trigger the factor 12. This is factor 12, ha? It will be activated. So, kaya kung nakita niyo, it's 12A. It means an activated na factor na siya. And uh, if ma-activate na si factor 12, magiging ano siya class? Uh, magiging enzyme siya that will lead to the activation of another factor. Kaya nga siya tinawag na cascade. Um, kapag ka si 12A, uh, naging 12A na siya, ang factor na naman na ma-activate is si factor 11. So 11, magiging 11A. And then um, kapag ka na-activate na si 11A, it's the same, it's the same thing. Uh, 11A will be um, an enzyme that will cause the activation of factor 9 to factor 9A. Okay, so pag umabot na siya sa 9A, uh, that's the time mag -me meet na sila sa common pathway dito ng intrinsic pathway. So sa extrinsic pathway class, again, na-mention ko kanina, uh, this will be activated if there is injury sa vascular smooth muscle. So may tissue factor na ma-release and that will trigger um, the activation of factor 7. Later class, merong mga pangalan ang mga factors natin. We have to be familiar also kung ano ang pangalan ni factor 12, ni factor 9, ni factor 11. Meron din yan silang pangalan. But ang involved na factor when it comes to the extrinsic pathway is the factor 7. So, magiging activated siya and then pareha sila ni intrinsic pathway na uh, ang ma-activate naman nila is yung factor 10. Okay? So, dito na sila mag -me meet sa factor 10. Um, the presence of the factor 9A from the intrinsic pathway and the factor 7A from the extrinsic pathway will cause the activation of factor 10. Okay? So, mahimo na siya factor 10A but um, para mag mabuo ang function ni factor 10A, kailangan din niya ng action ni factor 5. So, si factor 5 kailangan niyang ma-activate into factor 5A para um, cascading na ito 
um, mapunta na tayo sa factor 2. So si factor 2 class, ang pangalan niya ay prothrombin. And once ma-activate siya using the factor na 10A, it will become an activated factor 2 which is called now a thrombin. And uh, this thrombin is needed para si fibrinogen maging fibrin. And then this fibrin class um, will be the one that is used to stabilize the fibrin clot. Remember, the first part is the aggregation of the platelets. Pero kailangan class si platelets natin ay ma-stabilize. And yun na yung magiging help uh, when fibrinogen becomes fibrin. Together with the factor 8, ha? Together with the factor 8 ito, uh, magiging activated siya into fa uh, factor 8A. That's the time we now have a complete clot. We call it a fibrin clot. So kapag ka nabuo na ito, then uh, bleeding will be stopped and the or hemorrhage will be stopped okay questions uh, questions about the pathway class so wala akong nag-expect na karunda uh, karunda yun may memorize ninyo ni eh. <laughs> kung kinsa pinakauna na mga factors sa intrinsic and then sa extrinsic wala nagloading pa nagloading pa sa pathway class sa ano <laughs> Ang katawan na ang tablet sale kaya nag-loading pa. Nag-loading pa mo sa... Sorry na ito ba ko? Kaya lang, ma'am. Kaya. If you have, ano, if you have spare time, please watch the recorded discussion again. Kasi, um, I believe, Billy Manggun niya siya makuha sa kaisa lang. So, kailangan na ito siya ulitin. Okay? Um, ang inyuhang dapat tandaan, class, what are the factors involved in the intrinsic pathway? And then what are also the factors involved in, in the extrinsic pathway? And also sa common pathway. So, asa sila magnet And hangtod mabuo at ang fibrin clot. Nagawala-wala yung muhang net. It's okay. Uh, this is being recorded for your reference later. Now, ang ano na to, class, ang hemostasis na to na process is self-regulating. Um, when I when I say self-regulating, hindi din pwede na all throughout magkaklat na lang siya and hanggang maklag na, for example, in the blood vessel, mag magkaroon na ng obstruction sa blood vessel because of the clot formation. So again, this is self-regulating and the one that regulates the formation of clot and the synthesis of the factors involved in the pathways is the thrombin. If you have a lot of thrombin na um, that will trigger the the Wait lang. That will trigger the organ, especially the, um, I was thinking of the organ. It's the liver. It's the liver that produces this factors class. Uh, it will trigger the liver to stop the production of these factors para at the same time, dili na sobra-sobra ang clotting and magkaroon na siya og, ano, another condition na po if hindi na mag-stop ang pag-form ng Clot. So again, the one that will give the feedback is the thrombin. Okay? Questions about our pathway? Let us name our pathways class. You can ask question anytime, huh? Um, so these are the clotting factors. So factor number 12, uh, factor number 12, factor number 13, it's the fibrin stabilizing factor. Actually, Itong uh, factor 13, though wala ninyo siya nakita kagay na sa pathway, no? Um, that is included in the intrinsic pathway. Gihapon. And then, um, factor number 12 is called the Hageman factor. I'm starting at the bottom, ha? Uh, because, di ba, sa intrinsic pathway, after the injury, the first factor that will be activated is the factor 12. And that's the Hageman factor 
once this factor is activated, ang sunod na naman na maa-activate is the factor 11. And then that, that is called the plasma thromboplastin antecedent. And then after the 11, it's not the 10, right? It's the factor number 9. So I'm, I'm talking about the intrinsic pathway. So factor number 9 is called your Christmas factor or the plasma thromboplastin component. Okay? And then what's next sa 9? 10 na siya. So dito na mag-meet si intrinsic and si extrinsic pathway. Um. 10 is called the Stuart Prower Factor. Okay? And then, para magkaro magkaroon ng um, total function, complete function, si factor 10A, it needs the help of the factor 5. And factor 5 class is called the labile factor para ma-activate si um, factor 2, which is called prothrombin, Nahimo siya o thrombin. Now, uh, let me add, let me add also here, class, um, dito sa part na to, aside from the factor 5 na magiging activated, um, para ma-complete din ang function ni factor 10A, it also needs the help of the factor 4. And take note of this, it's the calcium ion. Okay? Again, um, it's the fact, uh, sorry, it's the calcium ion, which is the factor number four. So if you can um, observe sa mga medical technologies natin, diba, they have this so-called EDTA tube. Uh, remember that EDTA is a sequestering agent, sequestering agent or a chelating agent um, that will sequester metals. Now, if the blood is placed in the EDTA tube, Ang, ang iyahad yung ginakilate, iyahang ginasequester is the calcium ion. Because without the calcium ion, um, clotting will not be formed. So ginagamit nila yung EDTA tube if ever um, yung kanilang process or laboratory testing um, dapat dili jud muklat ang blood. Okay? Sige. Um, aside from that, other factors, we have factor 3, which is called the tissue thromboplastin, and the factor 2, the prothrombin, and the factor 1, fibrinogen. Okay? Um, and then, sa testing also that we do here is pag intrinsic pathway ang tinitest, we call it partial thromboplastin time, yang PPP or the APPP, activated partial prothrombin time. Pero pag extrinsic pathway ang mini-measure when it comes to the time kung kailan magka-clot ang inyong blood, uh, sa in extrinsic pathway, we call it PP, prothrombin time. That's the difference uh, between the testing. Again, intrinsic pathway, it's the PPP, partial, <laughs> not the PPP, PP, P, PPPP, or par, uh, partial prothrombin time, and then the other one, prothrombin time lang. Sa extrinsic pathway. Ilista ninyo to ha, because wala na ko na siya gi-include sa ako ang, um, ano, PPT. You have to listen, and then you have to take note. Now, um, let's move on to the products sa tuang recombinant DNA technology. So we have the first one here, the tissue plasminogen activator. Again, tissue plasminogen activator. Though, let's go back to the pathway. Though you cannot see plasminogen in the pathway, pero actually, um, we produce our own tissue plasminogen um, na ang trabaho is to Ano, inhibit the formation of fibrin. Dili na siya mabuo ang fibrin para walay clot na mahitabo. Okay? Or, or, or kung naanay clot, wala na further clotting na mag-take place pag naa si tissue plasminogen. Because again, tissue plasminogen is used to 
inhibit the formation of our fibrin. So, meron tayong product in the market that is synthesized using genetic engineering wherein the human tissue plasminogen is being copied. We call it Altiplase. The brand name is Activase. So Activase ha brand name na niya. Altiplase ang pangalan. Um, though this is not ano ha, dili lang niya siya Altiplase. We also have Streptokinase. Kaya lang man good. Um, hindi included si Streptokinase in our discussion uh, this afternoon because it is not copied from the human. Ang streptokinase is from the streptococcus species. Um, this one, the altiplase, is sa tao siya copied. Okay? So, para asa si altiplase, this is used to improve ventricular function after myocardial infarction. So, pag may myocardial infarction, um, remember, uh, there is obstruction in the blood vessels. So, for example, sa heart, my obstruction sa blood vessels sa heart, then it will obstruct the flow of the blood. Ang, ang mahitabo sa patient na to, Anna, the heart, the heart itself will be depleted with oxygen kasi na-obstruct ang blood flow and it will cause ano, death of the heart cells okay, sa myocardial infarction. So following myocardial infarction, we will be giving the altiplase. Okay, para to dissolve the blood clot. Uh, to dissolve the blood clot, we can also call these drugs as thrombolytic lysis, meaning lysis of the blood clot. Okay? Aside from that, um, altiplase can also reduce the incidence of congestive heart failure and decreasing mortality. Wait lang, excuse me lang. Uh, I need to charge. I forgot to ano plug the charger wait lang okay let's continue so um aside from that we can also use her uh, altiplase para sa acute ischemic stroke after ano ct scan or other na mga ano natin process sa diagnosis pag na rule out na yung intracranial hemorrhage, then we can use um, altiplase for the stroke. Uh, when you say ischemic class, these are conditions na nakulangan ng oxygen ang part ng organ because of obstruction like sa mga blood vessels natin. So, ganyan na nangyari sa ischemic stroke. Nagkaroon ng stroke uh, because of that. Obstruction, kulang na din ng oxygen. And then kapag ka na make sure na na ng, na ng diagnosing physician na walang hemorrhage yung patient, then um, we can give the altiplase. Kasi remember, it will dissolve the clot. It will inhibit clot formation. So, dili siya pwede pag may hemorrhage na ang patient. Mas, ma, ano, masamot ang, ang hemorrhage sa patient na to ane. Aside from that, we can also use this tissue plasminogen um, activator na product um, for pulmonary thromboembolism. I would like to ask, um, we have two types of clots, right? The thrombus and the embolus. Do you know the difference between the two? Yes, Rosel? Wala, <laughs> ma'am. How about the others? Or any guess? Ma'am, mag-research kami, ma'am. Mag-research? So, sige daw, you can, you can research. I'll, I'll allow you to use your Google. Unsay pulo sa ato ang Google, no? Kung dili na ito gamitin. Sige daw. Um, what's the difference between thrombus or and embolus? I'll wait. Hmm. 
gulat yung ganun. Sa pharmacology class, we will have a separate discussion of this. Okay, Farm Chem 2, Manino. We will be talking about products only for the Farm Chem 2. But sa pharmacology, we will dig deeper for uh, mag-dig deeper ta sa sakit, sa mga pathways, and at the same time, drugs, and how to use those drugs. Wala pa? Ma'am, stationary mass, ma'am. Ah. Stationary mass ang thrombus tapos ang embolus kay free, freely floating mass. Okay. So, if we are talking about the blood clot, um, if the blood clot stays in uh, the part, for example, where it is, ano, it is produced or it is formed, we call it thrombus. For example, um, nag-stay siya sa blood vessel sa heart, it's thrombus. But if the clot is like traveling around the body or nag-travel siya sa other part sa body na to, we call it embolus. Ha? Huh? Thrombus and embolus. So that's correct. Bless you. That is also correct, Majeda. Thrombus is a stationary blood clot and embolus travels to other part of the body. So, pagdaghan trombay and pagdaghan sa embolus, embolay ha ang, ila, ang iyahang um, plural. So, for example, sa lungs, uh, there is formation of both thrombus and embolus. We call it pulmonary thromboembolism. Ang problema man po good sa, ang, ang sa thrombus class, we know na if it if it stays in one organ, then that organ will be depleted with Ano, oxygen kasi the blood flow is being obstructed. Now, for the embolus kasi though, it is traveling. When it reaches the capillaries, remember that capillaries are small blood vessels. Maungot maguna siya dito sa capillaries and that, or sa mga small blood vessels na to. And that will, that where the problem starts. No, that's the problem with the embolus. Um, and aside from that class, um, retoplase is also being investigated for unstable angina pectoris. Are you familiar with angina? The word angina. What's what's the condition of the patient? Yeah, chest pain, isobel. There is chest pain. Um, why is there a chest pain? Because um, ang problema talaga is on the heart. Kasi siya mismo kulang ng oxygen. Uh, the difference between angina and heart failure is si angina class, ang problem natin, merong obstruction sa mga blood vessels sa heart. So siya mismo, sa, ang heart mismo kulang ng oxygen. And that is why it is painful. There is chest pain. Pag sinabing heart failure, um, the heart failed sa iyahang function which is to pump blood in the body. So when you say heart failure all throughout the body depleted of oxygen. And when you say unstable angina pectoris, um, this is a type of angina wherein the patient will experience chest pain even at rest. Kasi meron tayong tinatawag na stable angina na uh, magkaroon lang ng chest pain ang patient if there is like excessive exercise, if there is kanang, too much na exertion or sa force, kapoy ang patient, then may experience siya ug, angina, we call it stable angina. And the chest pain will be relieved once the patient will rest. Pero pag unstable angina class, um, this is much more delicado compared to the stable one because even at rest, the patient will experience chest pain. Okay? Yeah, there will be reduced blood flow sa heart because of those obstruction. And when I say obstruction, it can be an atherosclerotic plaque that is cholesterol, no? Cholesterol um, na mag-build up in the blood vessels. And ang problema man good sa atherosclerotic plaque, if, if kaning plaque na ni will have um, injury, like there will be tendency man good na masamad ang 
masama din layman's term ang atherosclerotic plaque and then collagen will be exposed that will trigger blood clot formation na platelet aggregation na mahitabo so madugangan ang obstruction if that happens and masamot og ka reduce ang blood flow sa heart mismo okay question so far about the alteplase the tissue plasminogen activator um it will this drug activates plasminogen mahimo siya og plasmin ha para ma-inhibit ato ang fibrin clot formation next we have the reteplase also this is another thrombo thrombolytic agent the brand name is retabase um, similar lang ang iyahang action to that of the alteplase. It's still on the activation of the plasminogen. Okay? Um, and then, pag ma-activate mang si plasminogen, it will cause the lysis of the blood clot, the thrombus or the embolus. And then, another one, we have the tenecteplase. Um, this is another tissue plasminogen activator, which is a genetic engineering product, but um, this is produced by the recombinant um, carbohydrates na mga um, cells na to, na produced. Tenecteplase ang uh, name sa ato ang product. Now, what you need to know about these products, kailangan kung sa myocardial infarction ni um, within the six hours after the myocardial infarction, na hatag na siya. Okay, kanina mga products. Kasi this will not be effective if um, more than six hours na nahitabo ang myocardial infarction. They cannot be solved the blood clot anymore. Okay, so for, for example, the blood clot is on the heart and it's more than six hours na we cannot use these products any more now we have the factor eight or this is the recombinant na anti-hemophilic factor eight by the way kaning mga names like recombinate cogenate bioclate helixate these are examples of the brands we have in the market for the factor eight na recombinant now para asa si factor eight this is for hemophilia a so when you say hemophilia A class, um, this is a congenital disorder na ang mga patients na naaying ane kay ilahang blood dili nagaklat. So there will be bleeding. Uh, why do we give them factor 8? Because that's the problem with hemophilia A patients. They lack this factor. Their body do not produce this factor. Again, I have mentioned a while ago na our liver is responsible in producing these factors for the blood clot formation. And again, for this um, condition, hemophilia A, their body do not produce the factor 8. That's why we have the recombinant product na factor 8 in the market para sa ating mga patients with this condition. So, lisod ni sa ilahan o kay, their blood won't really clot because of the lacking factor. Congenital. So, meaning pag anak sa ilaha, they have this condition na. So, kung natay hemophilia A, na tay hemophilia B. Okay? Natay hemophilia A, na tay hemophilia B. Um, sa hemophilia B, uh, what is lacking is the factor number nine, or that's the Christmas factor. Um, therefore, we also have recombinant product for this, the, cl the clotting factor nine, na pwede natin ibigay for the patients with hemophilia B. So this is to prevent and control the hemorrhagic episodes of this patients. Kasi just like hemophilia A, um, since they also lack one factor, then their blood will not also clot. Then there will be episodes of hemorrhage sa ilaha. Okay? Question so far about our products. We call this hemophilia B as Christmas disease because they lack the Christmas factor. Actually, Wait, I forgot why 
we call it the Christmas factor. Let's research all sabay sabay ta mag research why do we call this Christmas factor? Wait ah. I'm not sure if it has something to do with the Christmas celebration. Mom, first season. By the way, oh, wait lang ha, wait lang. I'll accommodate the answers later. Other name for the Christmas disease is the royal disease. Kasi, um, this is ano, genetically ay genetic shop na transmit pwede siya ma-transmit genetically so na ay royal family sa Europe na they have this kind of condition na pasa from generations to generations so aside from being called christmas disease this is also called the royal disease yeah sa UK yeah sa Europe siya I'm not so sure with the Christmas one, but I know that it is why it is called the royal disease. Yeah. Ah, thank you. Tama na pamo. Tama na pamo research sa ako ano kal. I cannot concentrate na si kong historia. Okay, so the one that discovered this, ang iyang surname is Christmas. So it has nothing to do with the celebration. Si pangalan ato. Let me see the chat. Celebration. Ang Santa Stephen Christmas. Mami, siya yung nag-discover. Walang sakit. Sakit? Oh, yes, ma'am. Siya yung first patient na sa kanya good na... It was discovered sa iya. Apo. Okay. So, that is... Ang si pangalan niya again? Stephen Christmas. He was... He was the one na first patient with the hemophilia B. Okay. Thank you for the research. Hindi ko makakoncentrate o research yung istorya. Yeah, actually, ang mga patients with hemophilia, silang tanan, dili dyan siya nindot na condition kasi wala nag-clot ang ilang hang blood. Na-discover day sa Yamalia. Kunti na yung muna nag-send, Quincy. Ah, Stephen Christmas ang naka-discover. Okay. Sige, correct na to siya. It was him na first <laughs> na wrong send. Uh, first nagkaroon sa hemophilia B. Okay? And then, I still have time, no? It's 3.43. We are down with the last last na to na product of genetic engineering. We have the anticoagulant But before ta mag-discuss o anti-coagulant, di ba yung nga the reteplase, the tenecteplase, the alteplase are called thrombolytic because they lyse the thrombus or the clot. Now we have now the anti-coagulant. What do you think is the difference between our thrombolytic drugs and the anti-coagulant drugs? What do you think? Sige daw. Mabisi jud ang inyong cellphone dira karon. Kamu kamu ang mag-discover sa mi, sa difference sa thrombolytic o sa anticoagulant. Before na ko siya i-discuss. Sige. Let's Mama no, i compare si uh, What's the difference between a thrombolytic agent and an anticoagulant? Paspasan. <laughs> Paspasan, okay. Well, anticoagulants are the drugs that are used in preventing the undue formation of blood clots inside the circulatory system. Whereas, thrombolytics are the drugs used for the removal of the thrombi that occlude the vessels, causing various diseases such as ischemic heart diseases and stroke. Paspasan, alay doi. But that is correct, class. Um, sana all paspas internet. <laughs> paspas, 
ano, si Mohani, paspas siya, oh, gano, internet kay paspas mang kayo siyang naka-research sa difference ni thrombolytic and ni anti-coagulant. When you say thrombolytic class, there is already the clot. Na-form na si clot. And then we will just, ano, um, remove it. We will lyse the clot. Para dili na siya mag-cause o mga consequences ng mga conditions like na mention ischemic heart disease and stroke okay existing na ha existing na ang um, clot para magamit nato si thrombolytic agent now for our anticoagulant um, this is for the prevention again anticoagulant uh, we use this for the prevention sa pag form sa clot Okay? So, tama na siya na preventing the undue formation of blood clots in the circulatory system. So, what are the examples of our anticoagulants in the market? Daghanta actually anticoagulants. We have um, mga pinakasikat. We have like the heparin. Yeah, tama. Tama na majada. Warfarin. Heparin and the warfarin are anti coagulants. So they are being given to like patients na may mga like congestive heart disease, may mga sakit sa heart para ano, to prevent blood formation and then mawi siya like into stroke or myocardial infarction. Um, kaya lang, what's the difference between warfarin and heparin? Sige, I'll answer your question later, Jai. What's the difference with between heparin and warfarin? Parehas mo sila anti-coagulants, but the other one is what? Sige, that's correct actually. Vitamin K antagonist. Pero I take note plus that warfarin is taken orally while the heparin is an injectable. So parenteral ato ang heparin. Okay? Unsa pud nang anti-agregants or anti-platelet. Okay, actually isang umbrella si anti-coagulant and si anti-platelet. Um it's just that atong mga anti-platelets um they are specific sa in terms sa ilahang action ha. Um, they inhibit platelet aggregation and adhesion. Pag mayon kag anti-platelet, inhibit nila ang aggregation and adhesion. So examples of our antiplatelets are like the aspirin, the clopidogrel in the market, the ticlopidine. <laughs> Let me write it sa screen basta gano, marong ta, marong spelling, wrong. Kilira ba mo daw at si Skology o mali nga spelling, mali ba yan na dirit so. <laughs> so we have here anticoagulants like the heparin, and the warfarin. But when you say class antiplatelets, ayan, um, we have examples like aspirin, clopidogrel, and then we have ticlopidin. So ulit-ulito na ko akong ginaingon since I only have three months na um, experience in the community pharmacy. I'm not ano, <laughs> dili ko expert when it comes to brand names. I know some brand names pero um, dili, dili tanan. Dili po ko parehas kahawod sa mga community pharmacist na kahawod kayo sila ng mga brand names. Okay? Wait lang ha. Okay. Sige. Aspirin, clopidogrel, and then um, ticlopidin. Um, let me just give you some of the brand names na I know. We have this Lavix for clopidogrel, and then ticlopidin is pletaal. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken with the brands. Yes, tama na siya, Christine. Anti-platelets 
nag-stop sa mga platelet na mag-aggregate or mag-stick together para wala'y blood clot formation. Remember, di ba, at the beginning of the our discussion, the first step in hemostasis is the platelet aggregation. Can you man good? Nga nung nakaseparate sila as anticoagulants, ay, anticoagulants, is yung straight. Um, heparin and warfarin, ang ilahang gina-inhibit is yung synthesis of the factors. Remember the dif daghan ka yung factors sa second stage of the blood clot formation. So mo na sila ang ilang mo na ang difference between now the anticoagulants and the antiplatelets. Kay na, na hatag naman nato ang difference kagaina ni anticoagulant and ni thrombolytic. Now, uh, before ko maghatag, we only have one product for the anticoagulant na genetically engineered. Uh, before na ko siya ihatag, let me add. Ay, taka talaga. Wait, let me erase it. Nga nung oh, akong libatang. Antifibrinolytic. So, how about this agent? Sige daw. Your research. How about the antifibrinolytic? Kasi trabaho nila. We are done with the three. Anticoagulant, antiplatelets, and then the thrombolytic. Mga thrombolytic na ito, katong mga altiplase, reteplase, tenecteplase, and so on. Oh, sige, tama ma dyan, the inhibitors of fibrinolysis. What do you mean by that? We'll take a break after after the lipid uh, the product huh? okay so tama na siya. when you inhibit fibrinolysis diba lysis means um i break ni mo ang like fibrin so diba fibrin is a blood clot so pag it inhibits the break uh, the breaking down of the blood clot then tama na yung hanging on na this is used for bleeding and hemorrhages and menstrual bleeding. Okay, na pansin derbe. Isobel, a type of drug that helps the blood clot. Meaning, class, the antifibrinolytic is kabalik taran sa tatlo. Nakuha kabalik taran siya sa mga anticoagulant, thrombolytic, antiplatelet. Instead, antifibrinolytic um, will inhibit the breaking down of the fibrin or the blood. The, the blood clot, um, it uh, it will prevent um, blood clot formation. Baliktad. Ano ni? Antifibrinolytics can maintain the integrity of the clot and prevent hemorrhage. Ano na ay ano? Prevent blood clots. Ah, fibrinolysis. Then, ano, nalibat na ko. <laughs> you are defining the fibrinolysis. Ano na, na, nalibo ko nga, ano na, may prevents blood clot. Na, instead, when you say antifibrinolytic, it will, um, ano, it will help na mag, mag form ang clot sa blood. Okay? Okay, tama na, Haida. They work by slowing down the process of breaking down a blood clot. So what is the what is the example of an antifibrinolytic? Because I believe I have given examples sa tatlo, antiplatelets, anticoagulants, and thrombolytic. So how about the antifibrinolytic? Kinsay na kinsay na katray magpaibot og ngipon diri. Abay wala na katray magpaibot og ngipon. Yeah. Yeah, sige, let's have our ano kanang in real life situation, kinsay nakatry. Suki. Suki mo pa iba itong ngipon. <laughs> okay, so ang sa ginahatag sa dentist pag magpaibot mo ang ngipon? Mephenamic acid. Para sa mephenamic acid class. <laughs> that is an NSAID. 
Ponstan. May phenomic acid di hapon ng Ponstan. It's a brand. So that is for the pain. Pero when you read pharmacology books, though may phenomic acid is under sa NSAIDs, pero ang ihang dose na ginagamit na to karon is not really an anti-inflammatory. Instead, analgesic lang yun siya. Para sa pain lang ang mefenamic acid. O <laughs> amoxicillin. Sige, puso pa na sa mga dentist. Amoxicillin. Tapos partner, gina sila doon, no? Mefenamic acid and amoxicillin. Okay, so I have seen what I am waiting. It's the tranexamic acid. Tranexamic acid. What's the brand name of this in the market? We have the, yeah, Hemostan. So, it is an example of an anti-fibrinolytic agent. Um, kapag ka ibutan ka og nipon, syempre there will be bleeding, but to prevent hemorrhage class, too much loss of the blood, then um, we can give an anti-fibrinolytic agent to stop the bleeding, and that is the tranexamic acid. Pero aside sa kanang nasamad ka, giibutan ka, gipon, actually, some doctors would prescribe this sa kanang mga girls with heavy menstrual flow. Kanang kanang grabe na kayo ang menstrual flow. Sometimes this is prescribed para sa anak na condition. Okay? <laughs> Pero dili ang sa uban dili uso ang tranexamic acid instead ice cream lang ang katapat. <laughs> ice cream lang ang katapat sa ano halo-halo pa bugnawan. Bitu uh, mom ice cream mom ana ang bok ang dentist na magkaon ice cream after magbuno. Iya yeah, para ano mag mag stop ang <laughs> lipay kay kapag human sa kasakit kay sakit <laughs> man dun mabunutan og ngipon no. Pagkahuma na na ice cream na dayon. Okay. I remember the first time I had that kanang tooth extraction. Nga no, diligid ako siya makalimtan kay nagubang bangko sa dentist. Feeling na ko kusgan kay kutong bata ko kay kanang nahadlok mong gugo nga ko ang nangipon. Sige, kana ganing oh, what you call that? Kanang sa arm ko, di ba naman ay patunganan sa kamot ang lingkuranan sa dentist. Tapos gana din ako itong bata ko. I was six years old siguro ato. Unya ka nang nangusog jug ko bonggang bongga habang ginaimtan kong ngipon hangtod sa naguba jud ang ano, ang bangko sa dentist. <laughs> May nalang kay Kailas ako mama ang dentist. Tambot na unsa na to ang nahitabo ato basta kay naguba. <laughs> natanggal ang ano, natanggal ang kataka ng sa arm good niya. Tapos gana din ako. <laughs> super saiyan. Oh, super saiyan. <laughs> <laughs> Super saya na dito pag nawala ang internet. <laughs> sa mo kay mong mama ang dapat magpaibot tapos ang ending ikaw ang naibtan. Okay. Pero minsan lang man mag I, I don't know with you ha pero sa amo usahay lang man magpaibot sa dentist most of the time ano dyan na siya tanod. Tanod o Ya, yeah, higot sa pultahan. <laughs> Para matanggal ang ngipon. Okay? So, I hope familiar na mo ha. Ano lang, just to give you a little background about these agents. Though, dili pa ta mag-discuss sa ilaha thoroughly. We'll reserve this um, deep discussions of these agents sa ato ang pharmacology. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me clear the writings sa screen. Okay, let's have the product. Um, of the genetic engineering na anticoagulant. We call the drug lepirudin. Wait lang. Yes, ma'am. Ay, okay po. I send na lang, ma'am. Ah, ah. Mag-break lang kami yun, ya. Ah, ah. Mag-break lang may si break and then I'll do that. Thanks. Okay, so we have lipirudin class. It is um, a recombinant product, pero not sa human ha. This one is from the leech, salinta, and we call it ano scientifically as hirudo medicinalis. 
So ano siya? Anticoagulant. Uh, this will prevent the formation of clot or thrombosis sa ano, micro, microvasculature of reattached digits. Like, like naputol imong hang tudlo and then i-attach balik um, to prevent blood clots sa dito na site. We may, we may give lipirudin. Though again, this is not from the human. It's from the linta, the leeches. Hirudo medicinalis. Ma'am, maon ito sa traditional medicine nga ginabutang sa likod na mga leech, mga linta. Oo. Kanuman. <laughs> Have you tried? Not yet. Wala, ma'am. Wala ko iba na. I've tried po halang. Okay. Kaya, marami daw brain ang leeches. I think so. Tama ba? Diba na? Iyo. Sa iyo. <laughs> Diba yan ta yung magsipsip ng dugo, ma'am? Yes. Ma'am na siya. Yung piyuhan, ma'am, niya yung dugo. Oo. Ano sila na mahadlok doon na? Yeah. Hindi, eh? Oh, mahadlok siya actually. Oh, kasi yan, pag, ma'am. Pag ang leech mo dikit, dugay kayo na siya matanggal, class. Mo, ano gina siya? Ang linta, pag once makadikit sa iyo ng panit, bihagin na siya, mo dikit, dugay ko aon. Ma'am, asin lang man na, diba, ang katapat? Asin o apoy? Oo. Pero kung, for example, ha, ang ka ng mga tao, like, wala ka balong asin, di ay ito. Kasi bira-biraho nila, matanggal, apili mo ang panit. <laughs> Kasi yung ato, dyan siya makadikit, klase. Grabe, dyan siya makadikit ang linta. Okay? Malisod lang siya ko, <laughs> kaya apili mo ang panit o kasunog. Tandoy! <laughs> <laughs> Grabe, gamitan na dyan ang tanduan. Ano yun, Nick? Ano sa? Sinila. Ano sa daw? Pili ko kasabot. Wala ko kasabot. Ma'am, ang pinakadali daw ng way para tanggalon ang leech kay pasagdan ra siya kay pag ma pag ma busog na daw siya kay ma <laughs> tanggal lang daw siya sa iya ha. Oh, actually, mubuhi ra, mubuhi ra gyud siya eh, og busog na siya. Pero kumusta na imo dugo ato? Although gamay lang man pud siya no, gamay lang. So dili man pud ning ato kadaghan jud nga dugo, pero yak. Og at the same time, I think it's painful na ginasuksok niya imong dugo. <laughs> okay, questions class, that's the last one for this lesson.